my palette that I'm using today, which is, um, I've got a piece of cloth in the middle there that's very wet and the colours squeezed into the dish. And you'll see that I've got a lot of white and some uh, Naples yellow there and various colours around the, the actual dish. Now, the idea of this particular box is that if you, when you finish the session, you can put the lid on and this will stay absolutely wet for weeks and weeks and weeks. So the colours are reusable, you know, after a long time. I've also got in hand is a, an old plate to mix the colours on. Now, I tend to use a lot of the flat brushes. I've got some round brushes. I tend to use a lot of flat and um, to say round and I've got a couple of water pots and we can uh, now make a start. I'm going to move the camera around to the picture now so if you've got any questions as Lois said if you could type them in the chat and we'll answer those questions during the, the session. Um, the name of the uh, is called my, my jello I think it's called uh, Yes, it's called My Jello, the, the palette. And in the UK, it's about 17, 60, 18 pounds in price, but uh, very good value for money. And I'm not, I'm not commissioned by the way, it's just a personal recommendation. Right, I'm going to take, do the sky first. Now, the color orange is, is just to answer your questions about orange. I use orange instead of a white paper because I like to work against a colour. I use orange for my uh, collages and my acrylics is my preferred ground because if little bits of the orange shines through, it just gives it that spark, particularly on my collages, but uh, and again on acrylics as well. So. I just like to start, you could use other colours, but orange is my preferred. So I'm going to take some white on the plate. It's only a little bit of water with a bit of white there. And I'm going to just take a little bit of the blue colour, which is like a turquoisey type of blue, to mix a nice sort of light blue. You've got to add white to all the colours to give them a good mix. It wants to be a nice creamy mix to put on to the sky. So here we go into the into the sky area. If it's too thin, the, the orange is going to shine through and you might have to give it two coats if that's the case. So I'm carefully going around the top of the, uh, the houses there and Sorry, can I just ask you what blue you put in with the white? This blue is a sort of um, a cerulean type blue, but any sort of uh, not ultramarine, you want something like a fellow blue or is another choice, but it's a sort of a cerulean type blue mixed with white. It doesn't matter if you go over the lines, it's, you can paint. The virtue of acrylic is that you can just keep painting over and over and over it and it just, uh, it'll cover over. So you can paint light over dark, dark over light. So it's uh, a very versatile medium. So it's a nice flat wash on the so I'm just the asking, Sue, is there an advantage to drawing and then putting the paint over the top? Because she's always sort of done the ground colour and then drawn over the top. So I say that again. Why is the... You drew first and then did the underpainting. But yes. She's always done the underpainting and then drawn on top of the underpainting. It, it's just, no, there's no... You can do either. You can do either. You know, it doesn't matter. You can colour it orange first and do the drawing over the top. Yeah. Or you do it, you do the drawing and then orangina it, as I call. But um, can you also uh, explain your your the paper that you're the canvas that you're? Oh yes, that, that's a good point, actually, Lois. Yes, um, I'll show you the. Now I've got that on the sky. I'll just go and get the 
folder for that. Um, a few moments. This is the paper that I'm using today. Can you see that? It's called Special Acrylic Paper by Claire Fontaine. That's the folder for it, how it looks. It comes on a, on a block and it's quite thick paper and it is acrylic paper, but I find it very useful for mixed media. I actually do my, um, oops, Daisy, I just moved it there. I actually do my collages on this paper um, I can do watercolour with pastel over the top and I can do these uh, acrylics on top of it as well. So it's a very useful paper and very good because it's not bulky like a canvas. I can save these in a drawer quite well before framing them. So for storage, did you, did you I, I prime find it? that they, did you prime uh, No, no, it comes ready primed. You don't have to prime it. It's just ready to go. So it's a great, it's quite smooth. That's why I use it for, for pastel and watercolour. I put the watercolour on first and then I can pastel over the top of it and get nice effects with the pen, the watercolour and the pastel on this particular paper. There is another one by Dale Rowney that's very good. Their acrylic board, very similar, but a bit more um, hard wearing. And I can show you a piece of that board. Yeah, I can't find it. <laughs> no, don't worry. Um, someone's um, asking what, what are the dimensions, please? Um, Just to show you the thickness, this was this was an acrylic I did on um, on this paper, slightly bigger, and you can see the thickness of the card. So it's quite thick paper, and it's smooth, so it's great to draw on. It's great to draw on, so. Now I've got the, the blue on there. Has everybody been doing the blue while I've been talking? Yes, I think so. They've all been looked <laughs> Good show. Right, we're going to block in a lot of the darks first. So I'm going to take the, the dark colour, which is in my case, um, red black. This is red black. Now, if you haven't got red black, you could use ultramarine with cad red mixed together. Or you could use, uh, what was the other colour I thought you could use? Black with a little bit of cad red. So probably black with a little bit of cad red. So you can see how dark that, that actually is. I haven't actually put any white with this. It's quite dark. So I can just scrumble in some of these darks into here and as I get up to the top I'm using the side of the brush to just scrumble the edge of there and down the oopsie daisy gone over my house doesn't matter there we go and then there's a nice dark in there so I'll just pop that dark in there and there's a lot of dark down the bottom of the of the uh, Rubin here. Now you'll be better with the pronunciation, Lois, of where this is. Very cool, is it? I've no, Verucola. Verucola. <laughs> the pronunciation of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a wonderful place. It's a wonderful place to go and paint. Is this particular venue? Um, I've been to the watermill about five times now, I think, over the years. And it's one of my favourite places to go. And I did a lovely sketch of this particular scene and took a photograph of it at the same time. I think the last time uh, was just before, about two years ago, I was there. I'm just popping in a few of the darks. 
here, just where I see the darks, just popping in these darks here. Oh, there's a bit of dark over here, so there's a bit of dark over there as, as well. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, red to this mixture to red it up a little bit, and I will put a little bit of the bluey colour in, or white. It's a little bit more white. It's a bit darker. A little bit more of the blue with black. It's tone. Tone value. I'm just going to paint in the, the bridge at the end. And a little bit more of the I'm just going to make a put a bit more white into it to get this sort of colour to put in some of the so this is the blocking in stage where we're not too worried about detail at the moment it's just getting some tonal values down and this blocking in stage I could put a little bit more in there perhaps while it's still wet just to lighten it up just ever so slightly I think into there. That's better. How's everybody doing? All right. I think so. Everyone looks hard at it. Hard at it. Jolly good. <laughs> Has anybody had any questions, Lois, at this stage where I'll just stop and wait a few moments for people to catch up? No, um, I've been answering no. them as we've been going. Once somebody wanted to know what the format of the right. paper was. Okay, I yes. I said 20 by the, 16. Yes, it's roughly about, about 20 by 16. The weight of the paper is uh, 165 grams, or pounds, sorry, pounds. 360 grams is the weight of the paper, out of interest. So let's get rid of some of that. Just going to put in a little bit of Naples yellow into that little box on the hill over there. That's a little bit more yellowy than that. What's the box? A house? I th I'm not sure what it is. It's uh, some sort of little boxy thing. So <laughs> <laughs> it's probably some of this. Uh, uh, extension <laughs> and it was quite misty the last day I went there. <laughs> yes, when we so, were there in the summer, I can't remember now. Yeah, um, not last year, was it last year? I was there? No, 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 no. for two years, don't I? So yeah, yeah. it was uh, the year before last, so. It had lovely mist in the valley, it gives you nice effects. So I'm just going around some of these. Uh, this colour here is Naples yellow and white. Naples yellow is another favourite of mine in acrylic. It's a good mixing colour as well as white. You can mix colours with Naples yellow. To, what actually the white actually does in acrylics is it bulks the colour up. Without it, the colours would be translucent or perhaps not thick enough. And you wouldn't be able to vary the tones very well. The white enables you to bulk the colour up. And, uh, and I'm just going to merge that into the yellow, just ever so slightly, just to get the light on the front of that building there, that sunlight. So it's supposed to be sort of sunlight. It's a little bit more Naples yellow into some of that, that's the yellow going in, just to warm it up a little bit in parts there. That's a bit more sunshiny, isn't it? So just an indication where we 
windows up and then just bring it down. Someone's asking you, where do you think the light is coming from for this painting? The light is coming from the right hand side. It's, it was to that the actual time of day this was taken was just about noon when I actually did the sketch and took the photograph. It was about noon time, just after we'd had lunch or just before we had lunch in the in the little bar down the road there, and. Uh, so it's quite high in the sky because it's hitting some of the rooftops as well as the front. So judging by the shadow that comes down over the, um, if I just show you here, judging by the depth of that shadow, I think the light is obviously to the right hand side, but very high in the sky because it's hitting the tops of the roof and the tops of the buildings. And the judging by the way of that shadow comes, it must be coming from this direction, the light on that. Oh. Some of that grey that I mixed with the, I've still got a little bit of that. So I can just inside there, just put in a little indication of where these mixed with a bit of the yellow, just to transit along there just to get a little bit of water to move it. If it doesn't move, put a bit of water with it. And I'm just blending it into the front of the yellow there. So just to get an idea of the light and the shade of that. Just a little bit more blending. A bit more colour, that's better. They're sort of a warm grey, these buildings. Because there's a lot of this greyness in the... So I'm just putting a bit of that purpley grey up onto this building here. So this is all still the blocking in stage. As I say, if any time you think that you haven't put it on thick enough, you can always go back over it again. And as I said, the beauty of this... Um, now, you can see on this building here, it's actually lighter on this side. So I've put a bit more yellow into the mixture, the same mixture as that, a bit more of the Naples yellow to put that little bit of the sunlight on that side of the building there. Yes, I'm looking at, all the time when I'm painting, I'm looking at tonal values, how different tonal shades all the time. So I can see that that tonal shade, I can see some more blue in this building when I look at it, but obviously this wants some of the yellow treatment. So we'll put a little bit of yellow treatment on that as well. It's a gray sort of yellow. Must be a fabulous place to live this. <laughs> the views yes. must be fantastic. Yes. It must be fantastic, the views in these houses. Up, well, up top it is. Yes, I think up top it is. Um, <laughs> of course, um, there's a river in the gorge. Yes, there is. So it's, so it's quite low down, oddly enough, even though it's mm -hmm. um, the buildings that seem to be on a hill. Yes, yes, they are. They just went up and up and up, didn't they, with this building? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. <laughs> up and up and up. 
Now I'm going to put a tiny little blue into that yellow mixture and just pop a little bit of blue and the yellow with a bit of white with a combination of the front colour with a little bit of the blue. Again, it's tonal value, it's, it's slightly darker than the front, so got to think about the... If I've got the fat colour on first, the purpley colour. And then perhaps put the little bit of blue on the side, just to blue it up a little bit. But all the shadows aren't necessarily the same colours, it's having the various colours onto it. And of course that front, so you can carry on doing the fronts of these buildings. That was a little bit lighter on the front of that one. You don't have to have them all the same colour, you can have a little bit of variation. There's a bit of light there, so I'll have that bit of light on that. Bit of water. If you do the blue, get some water on it. I'll bring it down, and that's got some light on it too, so we'll. How's everybody doing? Yep, still uh, doing well. Everybody's everybody's uh, keeping up pace. Uh, I think so. just, some, some people are just want watching. To, want me to, to slow down at all, or is I'll okay? get people to tell me on the chat if they are getting. Yes, up. if they're happy, I want me to stop for a few minutes and catch up. I don't mind. Someone says they only have cad cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow. Will that do? Um, cadmium yellow will do. Uh, just to make sure. Have you got um, raw sienna? Yeah, maybe she has. Raw sienna would be quite good with white. That would probably be a better um, with white with a little bit of yellow, cadmium yellow into it. Yeah. So a bit of raw sienna, a bit of cadmium yellow and a little bit of white will get you to near enough the Naples yellow. Right, right. A few people are saying it's a little bit fast, so just, but you know. Yeah, just, I'll uh, just have a little, are there any more questions at all? No, no, they're all working away. <laughs> someone, someone's saying you're not cleaning your brush in between shades. Does that matter? No, 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 I don't very much. No, I don't. Because <laughs> watercolours do, I think, so. Yes, yes, different. yes. How did everybody manage with the drawing? Was that a challenge? Uh, I don't know. I can't see anybody's drawing. They're all there. Uh... <laughs> Just going to say yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenge. <laughs> Just finish off that little bit. The shadows on those two top um, build, bits of the building. Yes, these the one, ones. Yeah, that, the one on the right. The shadow on the right seems to be darker than the shadow on the left. You'd, I would have thought it would be the other way around. Yes, yes, it's 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 been very high in the sky. The yeah. sun, it's uh, odd. If it, yeah, would be, it, is. it would it would be really nearly um, midday. It would be. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we normally, I think it'd probably be before lunch. Because normally after lunch we're more or less work, working up the hill to get picked up. Yeah. So I think it was probably more in the uh, in the morning, just before we went to lunch. Yeah. So more towards midday. But I had a funny instant where I had a, a student in class. I'll just make that a little bit sh uh, straighter there. That's it. Um, and he wanted to paint this picture of Stays, which is on the northeast coast. And I know the way that the light works in Stays. So he said, well, where do I start with this picture, Sue? He said, I've got no idea. There's a lot of perspective in it. And where do I start? I said, well, first of all, you've got to find your eye line. And I don't know who this person took the picture, 
but there must have been sitting down or crouching down. And the lady whose picture it was said, well, how did you know that? I took the picture and I was bending down because I said, your eye line was right down here. Mm. And I can tell you it was about 11 o'clock in the morning because I know the way the light works and stays. She said, well, how do you know that? It was. <laughs> uh, I said, but the only thing I cannot tell you is who you were with. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of people are, are saying that they're struggling a bit with blending colours. So maybe you could explain a bit about Just a little bit. If it's not moving too well, put a little bit more water with the mix. If it's not working well, moving too well. Water it down a little bit more if it's not moving too well. It's a little bit of yellow mix. It's certainly a good colour to get is Naples yellow if you're going to paint in acrylics. Naples yellow is a, a must for me to have. And then just a bit of that yellow mixture. First it was mixing the colour and were they all right with the colour that they got arrived at? Uh, she doesn't say. She doesn't say. So just a little bit of a path there going off the side just to get the... Um, That's a little bit of light blue there. That side, there's a bit of window. I'm putting a little bit of light blue in there. Put a little bit of light blue in there. I'm not going to put it all over. I'm just going to, and if it's not blending like it isn't there, I was going to wash my brush out and just blend it a little bit more with the brush like that. Once we get these buildings blocked in here, we can then start going back over the pictures, starting to put the foliage in and, and rectifying all the, and getting the roof lines in, the windows in, things like that. Someone's saying she's using Naples and white, but it isn't coming out with a glow that you've got on your painting. Why might uh, Well, be? I've used Naples yellow and white just only together for here. And if it's not too, if it's not coming out, just put a little bit more of the Naples into it. Like this building here, that's a little bit cool because I've got some, I was going to mix up a fresh batch with some white of the Naples yellow. And that's the color you should get with Naples yellow and white. If it's too white, just put more of the yellow into it. I tend to scrumble the colours in a lot as well, so... Is that, a is that a technical term, scrumble? Yes, yeah, scrumbling, scrumbling is, yes, yes, it's a technical term, <laughs> where you've got the side of the brush, and you can just scrumble it in like that. Certainly I use that sort of technique for the... Um, 
just get a feel of the overall picture. So I did take a picture of when I did the other one of this blocking in the stage. And this was, you know, more or less how what we're aiming for today to get this blocking in stage. So we can come back with the greens and things like that. I was asking if you could show your palette from time to time because she's turning to mud on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one. <laughs> there you go, the side of the plate. I actually work into the colours as well, using some of the colours that I've got on the plate as well. So that's a bit lighter than yellowier. Yeah. Got a bit more sunshine on that one as it's dried. I'll just put a little bit more on that one. If it's turned to mud, how how can they retrieve it? Just clean, just clean it if it's turned to mud. Okay. Let's clean it because they've probably got too much of the purple mixing with the other colours, which it would turn to mud if, if you got that purple in with it. So try not to. Um... How would they clean it on the canvas with a cloth? Clean the. How do they clean, clean the canvas? Clean the canvas. Yes, if, because it's turned to mud on the canvas. On the oh, on the canvas. Well, let it dry and then paint over it. Oh, fine. Okay. Yes, so just paint over the. Uh, so you can dry it with a hair dryer. You can dry it with a hair dryer. Yes. So I've got one handy. We can dry it with a hair dryer. That's what we've done. That'd be a great idea. I've put it in. But you can dry it with a hair dryer and then paint over the top of it. As long as you can see where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. Yes, I've painted over pictures in the past. Um, you know, you can with acrylic. If you've painted a picture and you felt, oh, no, I could have done better, or I think I can paint something else over the top of that, I just usually give it a coat of acrylic over the top or to lose some of it and then just draw over the top of what you've got and start all over again with a different picture. And you can you can do this with acrylic. You can also use acrylic if you like oil painting. And we know how long oil paintings take to, to do. That you can uh, use an underpainting with the acrylic and then do oil painting over the top of it. So you're not going to paint the whole area with oils, but you can paint really very effectively over the, the uh, acrylic. So it's a very versatile medium as acrylic. So a little bit of uh, tone up there for the side of that building there. A bit darker than it is. I'll just take a bit of ultramarine. Just to darken that up ever so slightly, that one there. With acrylics as well, you know, my experience of students with um, acrylics is that they, they can buy very cheap acrylics at times and cheap whites. I don't think it matters as much with acrylic if you have cheaper acrylics in, in general. You can buy most people's acrylics, but the fact is when you mix the white, you've got to buy a good quality white because some of the whites that are in the cheaper end of the range are too thin to make the bulk of the paint. And there is a product called Mixing White that's meant to bulk up the paint without the loss of the colour.
but if you want a big statement of a white area in a painting, mixing white isn't going to do it for you. You need proper titanium white, and I tend to use the uh, System 3, System 3 uh, acrylics. And they're very good and they're not over expensive, but that's a good white and it will perform the way that you want it to, to perform. All right, so is everybody okay? Yeah, I think everybody's looking calm. Calm? No, I'm just. <laughs> Let's take that down a little bit further. And we'll put a little bit of uh, light on that. Right, so I've put in a little bit more there. We need to get some side colour on this side of the building. So we'll just see what colour that is. A little bit of more white into that. It's a red black. Now these the red, the red, black that I've been mentioning is called an interactive acrylic. Now I don't know if anybody's come across interactive acrylics at all, but basically what they are, normal acrylics will dry very quickly and dry fast and you can't get it off, but you can paint over the top of it. With interactive acrylics, you can reactivate them with a spray. So if I was to go like that to, to that section there and it was interactive, it would start to be, well, you would start start to make it workable again. So it's a very good, I don't know if that does it there. So let's have a look and see if it takes any off there. No, of course, of course I've mixed it with something else. It loses its interactiveness, but um, they're very good if you like to work wet into wet, the interactive um, acrylics. So there's a bit of dark down here that we need to get on. So a tiny little bit of dark down that section there for the rooftops in shadow. So. And there's a brush, wash me, brush out again. And a nice little bit of uh, light up on the top of there for the sunshine there. So, more down there. And this wall, what's doing here? And a little bit more down down here as well. Have you got any more questions? What's that one say? No, that was the one about the palette. The palette, right. <laughs> I'll do a little bit of rooftop colour. Now, if we've got a bit of pink, that would be good. Or if you haven't got pink, use cadmium red or the, probably the crimson red would be good with a little bit of white to make a pink or perhaps a little bit pinkier than that. Perhaps a little bit of the crimson into that. Just to see if it will, uh, no, a bit more yellow, Naples yellow into it, I think, to orange it up a little bit. Yeah, so. That's better. Just a tiny little bit of orange into that. Naples yellow or yellow, if you haven't got Naples yellow. If you just put a little bit of cadmium yellow, I've just put a bit of cad yellow into it. You'll see that it just warms it up to get this nice uh, warm glow on the uh, rooftops there. And you can pop a little bit of, uh, I should put it where I've got on my brush. I could just put a little bit here and there just to warm up some of the um, 
I will have a little bit on there as well, just to get some idea of the different colours on the, the walls. I'm not going to put it all over the place, it's just here and there while I had it on my brush. Is there a so, name for the spray for the wet on wet acrylic painting? Uh, no, 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 it's just water. <laughs> just plain old water. Um, you can buy with the, if you look up the Atelier Interactives, you can buy, um, the, the only trouble is if you were painting with the interactive acrylics, if you were doing a glaze over the top of something and you had the interactive acrylic underneath, when you paint over the top, you could move what you, like I've been going over the top of some of this. If I wasn't careful with the interactive, it would actually um, regurgitate, is the better word to, to call it, that it would start to reactivate again and I would be able, with, with mud, so there is a product that they sell called um, locking formula. So you can lock what you've put down. Let's put up the shadow into that. Just merge it into the building there. It's quite shadowy there. So I'll put into that a bit of uh, So a bit of light on that uh, bit there. And of course, coming back to that nice orange, we'll try and get a bit of orange onto that roof there. Now, of course, it's a little bit lighter. While that colour's on, I'm just going to take the, just a suggestion of the roof tiles, just take a little bit of that lighter one and just put some few suggestions of stripes on that roof. I'm going to go over the top of that roof there to put a bit of light on the top of each of those building there, just to give you that bit of sunlight on the top there. How's everybody doing? <laughs> yep, they look hard at work. <laughs> I haven't put the proper shadows in yet, but I've given some variation to the buildings with putting these other colours on the top just to give you some variations of the, the age of the brickwork and plaster work, just to break it down a little bit. If anything, it's very much lighter on this side of the building here. So we'll put a nice light down there, I think. Daisy, just dropping the brush. And just a little bit more sunshine on that one. Put more yellow into something, you get sunshine. Warm colours up by using um, yeah, some yellow into it and you can cool colours down by putting blue into it. So I'm going to take a smaller brush for those uh, roof tiles now I've got that lighter. So I'm using a rigger brush here just to get some lighter bits on that roof there, just to put a suggestion of the roof tiles. That Can you just, just tell me what colour the roof tiles are? Which colour you use? Sorry. Uh, it's Daples yellow and white again. So I'm just popping these, uh, just a suggestion of the tiles as it comes down. 
It was the orange we put underneath and then the tiles on the top are the, um, see where that roof goes, it comes right down to here and then that one goes up over that one there. And it goes right over the top. So we'll just put that suggestion of the way that that comes around there. And that wants a nice light that's sunk in a little bit. So just a little bit more light on the top of that one. And a little bit more light on the top of that one too. Right, so we're getting to the point now we've blocked it all in. So we're sort of, sort of looking at now, coming back over the picture, rectifying some of the bushes here, the windows, the foliage now. Right, I'm going to start off by putting just a little bit. I'm using the side of the brush to scrumble in the idea of where the bushes are. and a little bit up at the top. I'm going to just take some ultramarine blue and pop it into that colour just to darken it up a little bit and I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of that into there, into there. Sorry, can you just say how you got the green again, please? It's the green is made with the with with um, blue, ultramarine blue, with a little bit of raw sienna and white. I'll put more blue into it. You'll see that that's the that's the actual ultramarine blue on its own. So just to get a little bit of that merged into the dark that's underneath that we put just to get the effect of the, um, the foliage in that top corner. And I want to sort of get some highlights on that. We can then take some lemon yellow and white just to put in a few little bits of, uh, and I'm just gonna move, move that with my finger just to get a few little highlights here and there particularly at the top of the, just to move it in. I like to get my fingers into it, <laughs> just to get a few little highlights on the, uh, there's a tiny little bit down there. So they're not just too much repeated shapes. That's the, and a little bit in there as well, just to, I take back to the blue. Now, that, I've just done that little bit there. And I've done the top right hand corner. That bush is going, we're going to do this bit now here. So I'm going to mix up some green with ultramarine and uh, lemon yellow this time. We'll have a go with that. just to pop in some of these nice sort of dark green. I'm going to merge that into the dark. I'll take it over the wall a little bit. You can see how the darks play out by putting the darks in. And perhaps a little bit up around the outside of there, scrumbling it in so you get a more of a loose edge, the uh, painted edge. Just losing the green up into that dark and then coming in with the lighter green here and there just to pop in the, and just purge it in a little bit with your fingers just to uh, get some of these nice bits of light onto the um, some little bits of light here. So 
Is there a bit more yellow into it? It's gone a bit dull. So a bit more yellow here and there. Let's get that nice uh, bit of so we'll do all the foliage I think in this session bit. Bigger brush now to do down here. So I'm going to mix up a big batch of the green. And I'm just going to do down at the bottom there. So if I just push you down a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing down. Can you see what I'm doing down here? Yes. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Right. Okay. With a little bit of blue dropped into that. Let's get in a greeny mix down here with the brush just to start and then scrumbling it again. And before coming in with the yellows. I haven't painted it as really, I've changed it a little bit from the reference picture because there's a bit too much of this down here. So I have changed things a little bit. It's nice to have the opportunity for keeping a bit of the orange in where you can. And then back to some of the dark. A little bit more dark into there just to get some variation. Might come over some lights as well. Right, so let's keep an eye on the time. So, on there. Right, okay, and then we've got a little bit of over this corner here as well. So, Right, a little bit of green again. Just in this corner. If You'll need to redirect your camera, Sue, because we can't see where you are. All oh, right, okay, my love. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, where am I? Oh, That's there. better. It's perfect. Next stop. Yeah, next stop. Just, just in this corner bit here. And then some dark into it just to. This was some dark, that red black into it, I think. It's just to darken it down a little bit. And of course, we've got some sunshine to put onto it. So Let's move your board slightly to the right because it's not in the frame. No, the no, other way. The other way. That's yeah. it. Perfect. That, Good. That's thank, it. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's a pleasure. Mm 
All right, okay. So how are we doing with foliage? <laughs> I think people are working away. Good, 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 good. This might just take it down a little bit more, just to... I think the next stage is putting in some doors and windows. Yes, good idea. Mm. <laughs> right, so you can either do this with a pen I'll show you both if I can. You can either go over it with a sharp pen. Pens. These are great pens, these sharpies, sharpie pens. The only trouble is they don't like working upright pens. <laughs> Um, it'll work for so long it's dry so you can draw over the uh, again putting your windows in are these waterproof Sue? they're waterproof pens yes I use them all the time it's what I draw the picture with is these pens so um, the great little uh, I love working with these pens I do you've got one of my pen and, and soluble pen pictures haven't you with the the river stream, the river yes did you yes. do anything with that uh, yes it's uh, yeah. hanging in our living room oh lovely very there nice i uh, did that down by the stream last time i was there so um And then, of course, I can put in the, but you can either do it with a pen or you can do it with a brush. So feel what you're happiest with. And I'll go underneath, probably get a finer, straighter line by using the pen. And put in the, if what you can do with the pen is to do a little bit of the wavy line across the, Just rectifying some of the Someone's asking, are you going to paint over the pen with paint? You can do, yes, you can paint over the pen. Yes, I might do um, on some of them. There's lots of little bits of window. As I say, they don't particularly like to work up like these pens. That's the only thing. So, whilst you can, you can use them. So, that could have a little bit of a wavy line up there just to suggest it's got hands. So, you can really put in your drawing. You can start to draw in your windows up there getting the uh, further ones, and then you've got all this sort of um, keeping your perspective. Uh, <laughs> on there, just get the over, and then drawing in your windows. Now these have got sort of blinds. Uh, So you can just start drawing your blinds in. <laughs> you start to you can see how you can draw over these um, acrylics quite well.
someone's making the point that the Sharpies are oil based and maybe mm -hmm. better to use a permanent ink marker or what do you what No, do you I've never had any problems. I've used Sharpies all the time. I never had a problem with them ever. So um, they've always done very well over over these acrylics. So I've never had a problem with the Sharpies. I've always used Sharpies. But any permanent pen would do. Just happened I like these uh, Sharpie pens, so. I use a lovely uh, soluble pen by Roach Ring. It's called an art pen, and that is soluble pen, very soluble. So a mixture of the permanent pen and the soluble pen make lovely sketches, so. You know, I'm giving all these tips to you to think about, you know, further work with acrylic and what you can use acrylic with. And it's it's a marvellous medium for doing the mixed media with as well. So, and then it's got this uh, bit of where the plant pots are up here. So that continues up there. Just give us with the things I can find the line and lose the line I don't want to be too specific about drain pipes and things so I know we all need drain pipes but the ugly things <laughs> oh that wants to have a little bit more in there so there's a lot of work up there a little window up there Not doing too much of. Uh, it's lasting out quite well. This pen. And if you make a mistake, you can just go over it again. So it's not a problem. So lots more of this. So uh, that's got a. Bit of a gap there and more of these windows. So I can keep going back over these every so often but uh, it's just to give you an idea of drawing back in these windows then I can paint some of the windows in using paint. So We get these in, we can get the shadows in on the buildings. So, and you can just put a little bit more. You see, it goes over the pen quite well, paint goes over the pen quite well. I like to put, when I've finished a picture ready for framing, I like to uh, I'll put some other colours over these. They're a little bit on the dark side for me, but uh, um, I'll go straight in line in there. Let's see the drawing in. I 
how we're doing with that. So just a little bit more down at the bottom here, where I'm going to put in the a little bit of the um, vein down here. So there's a little bit of that dark going in to that, just to get. Put in a few little bits of light up there just to show a bit of reflection. We could put a little bit of light in the windows there. So just having a, a window that's uh, dark. Just a little bit of ultramarine blue might be quite nice in the window, so. Rather than having a black window. Just trying to get a few little feeling of the ravine coming down here. So just One more dark underneath here. The board needs to move to your right, Sue, to get the, the painting in. How about that? Well, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it all moved. Uh, more, even more to the right because we can't what? see the bit you're painting. Um, let's have a look at the paint, the, uh, your screen. Right. Um, That's better. Yep. Mm -hmm. Move the camera up slightly so it's pointing a bit more up. Right. There we go. Oops. There we go. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, better. Lovely, right, okay. So I want to mix up some shadow colour next. Let's see if my usual shadow colour works nicely. In watercolours, one of my favourite mixes is Cad Red with Ultramarine. And it gives me lovely shadow colours in watercolours. And uh, oh, that's not dark enough. Is that what you're doing now? I'm just mixing it up to uh, get this shadow colour that I'm looking for. So, oh no, that's not nice. Don't like that. I think we'll have to scrap that, go for something else. <laughs> So 
bit of that in the red black and then some white. Can we see your palette at all? Yes, I'll just get the colour mixed up so you can see what I'm uh, mixing. This is what I'm aiming for, this one here. Right. And a bit more blue into it. You can only tell when I get it on whether it's going to be the right shade. So let's have a look at this one here, for example. So, and where does it come down to? It comes down in a funny... Uh, And of course, this one is uh, sort of comes over, so it's a sort of a bluey, bluey purple colour I've used. So that comes over like that, shows you the shape of the building. Of course, it's got a lot of dark in that corner, so I'm just taking a little bit of the uh red black just pop that into there just to get the ultimate just merge it in a little bit with my fingers to get that ultimate dark that goes round round there and into this um back to that nice colour merge it in Of course, that goes right the way over. And once you start getting the shadows in, it seems to bring it to life a little bit, doesn't it? So, and then it comes right down. Where's the picture got? There we are. Just mix a little bit of white with it lighten it up a little bit as it comes round. I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. Right, a bit more water and a bigger brush I think so. Can see how far it comes up. It comes over to about there. And muddy it up a little bit with a bit more of red black. I lost that bit of blue I had, which I liked. <laughs> Change the brush, do some cleaner brush. I'm just going to put some of the yellow into that just to merge it a little bit more. Come back to that in a minute. So, got about twenty minutes left. So yes, yes, minutes. yes, yes, yes. We we'll try and get it. Uh, this is a good stage to get in. Is this sunlight and shadow bit? So uh, just to get the shadows in there, and there's a big shadow going across there. Yeah, 
might have to re-establish my window a little bit, but uh, at least to get that shadow in, in there. A little bit of shadow underneath there. Clean my brush out. What a shoe. And then just to soften that off with the brush there, I'm just going to take the the brush of just with some clean water on, get some more clean water and just soften that off to get that nice soft finish there. So it comes uh, So just getting that softer and a bit darker. And that bit there. So what's got Shadow coming in there. Oops, a daisy, too much of the white. Right, so I've got a um, nice darks to go in underneath these. So I'm going over some extra dark just to merge that dark, ultimate dark, over that bit there. Just merging it into the underneath bit. And a little bit of the purple underneath that just to merge it in to give that nice little bit of dark underneath the eaves. The dark you go underneath the eaves, the more overhang you seem to to get. So. These all have a little bit of shadow underneath them as well. A little bit of dark in here.
If anybody wants to email with me with any questions, I don't mind at all. Lois, if they want to. Just a little bit of shadow in there, I think it needs. That's very kind. I'll let everybody know mm, your yes, email yes. address. Yes, yes, that's fine. I don't mind at all if they want to ask any questions they can think of afterwards that uh, they want to know, or mediums or whatever I've used. Just putting that little bit of that into shadow there. So how's it looking down there? It looks a bit. While you're doing that, do you have any tips for cleaning up? Cleaning up? Oh, water always works. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, keep your brushes well rinsed out. Well rinsed out because it's lethal on your brushes. I wouldn't use any expensive brushes on your acrylics. So I want to get a few little bits of... Uh, there's that nice blue I had earlier on, I liked. <laughs> yes, the plates, I wipe off all the surplus of the, um, a bit darker. I wipe off all the surplus off the palettes with a kitchen roll. And then I just usually soak them in a bowl of water, hot water plates, and it just, um, it just uh, takes off the, it just washes off the uh, porcelain plates, which is good. Put the lid back on your Stay Wet palette. Just put a little bit of green down there. And a little bit of the Naples yellow and white. Just to muddy that up a little bit, I'm going to take a bit of the purple and just pop a bit of the shadow colour on there just to uh, right. So it's just literally finishing touches now of uh, just putting things back in a bit. So just a little bit more of that window there. It's a nice dark underneath that window. Oh, not used. <laughs> With shadows, just a little tip about shadows is they're always darker from the source. So you, from the actual thing it's coming from the shadow it'll always be darker and then lighten up the further they come from it in general so that's just a little tip on shadow so your shadow isn't always the same color throughout so that wants a shadow on it as well So it's just literally going back over it now, just checking some bits and bobs, a little bit darker there. We can have a little bit of light, light on top of here. A little bit of dark. Just 
My little plant pots, you want them in? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of greenery here and there, so a little bit of green back. Just a tiny little bit of green up there, just willing, and there's little bits of green, perhaps darker green down there. It's in shade, so better. Need to go out and weed a bit. A little bit more just up there. Put in a bit more crackiness into it in parts. How are we doing, everybody? All right. Oops, got one colour on there.
How is everyone doing? It's looking pretty good. Yes, it's nearly there. It's nearly there. So um, no, I need to light down that side there. It's still some people good. are working alongside, I think, but a, a number are just watching you now. I just think. watching, yes, that's fine. So just put in a little bit of light around the top of that just to catch the light as it goes around. And a teeny weeny bit of white on those uh, awnings there. So just tiny little bits and bobs of those in there. I mean, a few sort of suggestions of uh, bits and bobs there, just little bits and bobs. Tiny little bit of darkness in that bit there. So obviously his front door here. <laughs> I hope they have a lift in these buildings. <laughs> I wouldn't think so for one moment. No, no, hard work getting up the stairs. <laughs> Something little bits of the... Uh... Just tiny little bits of detail and things now, just to go back and have a look at things. So just strengthening up in parts. I wanted to get the feeling of it dropping right down into the ravine where the, the water is. So. Take the tape off the uh, side here. Man, I've just probably, probably dropped down, but <laughs> the idea of the um, Emphasising this that path there, just with the sunshine on it. Wish just to blend that a little bit more. Green. 
just try little bits and bobs where you feel you need a bit of a highlight. You can then start to come over and just emphasize some of the I find when you're doing a painting, it's nice to, when you're painting one on the hoof like this, it's nice to, when you're finished or think you've finished, is to put it aside on an easel and just look at it for a little while, just to make sure that um, you've got what you were aiming at, because it's looking at it with fresh eyes a few days later is important. Especially if you think, oh, I don't know if I've finished. It's a way of looking at your picture. And I'll tell you a tip is to uh, reverse it and look in a mirror if you dare do it. Because all your mistakes just glare out at you because you're looking at it in the reverse. If it works in the reverse, then you know you've got it right. But uh, just a tiny little bit of light. On that one there, just to you see how you can keep on painting over over things to get um, textures and like that. So I'll try to get lots of colours into these shadows. So tiny little bit of uh, pinky light, I think, there. Just to give a little bit of light into that awning that's there, so... So how's everyone doing? We're nearly at the end of this one now. Yes, yeah, some people are generally sort of not looking frenetic, but uh, <laughs> finishing up. Yeah, she's like just finishing it off with the little highlights on the rock face here. So just. It's in a little bit of uh, I don't want it looking too straight and formatted and uh, oh, let's change that a little bit. I don't want it looking like lines, you know, sort of uh, Get it to uh, spend it up a little bit, that's better. <laughs> when you're painting, it's always a challenge with yourself, isn't it? To um, I don't know what anybody else feels, but a challenge with yourself of uh, creating what is in your mind's eye to what you actually want is the question. So <laughs> You can see little bits of the orange still coming through in parts, so... Let's let that go off into the... Right, so... Spoil that a bit, so put that back in.
just emphasizing a few of those tiles as well on the top there with a bit thicker paint. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Right, how are we doing, everybody? <laughs> For those who are painting along today, please do send in your paintings to me by email. Yes. And yeah. I'll put them in the gallery mm -hmm. alongside, alongside, of course, yours, Sue, as well. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? <laughs> yep, they're all, some are still working along. Yes. But um, pretty much finished by the looks of things. Oh, very good, very good. Everyone looks quite relaxed. Oh, everybody relax good. Nobody's tearing the hair out. With hair. Not what I can see. <laughs> if they're fully absorbed, that's good. <laughs> Is that you finished there, Sue? I think so. I think so. I could fiddle with it a lot longer, but uh, I think for the purpose of today, I think it's uh, pretty much there. <laughs> 